Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including production updates on the cheap Tesla, Tesla's supercharger monopoly, another record quarter, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, Tesla released their Q1 2023 delivery numbers this week, and yet again, they broke all previous records. Most analysts had a consensus of Tesla delivering about 420,000 vehicles during Q1, and Tesla confirmed that they beat those numbers in both production and deliveries. In total, Tesla produced 440,808 vehicles, 19,437 of those were Model S and X, while 421,371 of those were Model 3 and Y. This is of course spread across all of their factories. For deliveries, they delivered a grand total of 422,875 vehicles. Of those, there were 10,695 Model S's and X's delivered and 412,180 Model 3's and Y's delivered. That is a noticeable gap in production and deliveries, and it's especially noticeable for their higher priced vehicles where they made 19,000 of them but only delivered about 10,000 of them. Tesla attributes this to their shift to a regional mix of vehicle builds and introducing those cars into new markets, saying, quote, we continue to transition towards a more even regional mix of vehicle builds, including Model S slash X vehicles in transit to EMEA and APAC. One thing has been clear though, Tesla has been trying a lot to sell inventory and new orders of the Model S and X. They've introduced a new paint color, new features like the updated glass roof, and a round steering wheel, all while dropping the price of those cars even further than they did in January. It seems they're having trouble selling these cars as the Model 3 and Y offer a lot of similar features at a much reduced cost. As for the financial results here, quote, Tesla will post its financial results for the first quarter of 2023 after market close on Wednesday, April 19th, 2023. There we will learn about how Tesla's increased deliveries, aided by lower cost, may have affected profit margin. At the same time Tesla was announcing this, they also announced a new milestone for their Texas factory. That factory has seen a number of delays, but shortly after Tesla announced Giga Berlin hitting 5,000 vehicles per week, they announced that Texas has hit 4,000 a week. They posted a video from their Texas factory on their Twitter account saying, congrats, Giga Giga Texas team on building 4,000 Model Ys this week. As of right now, that factory is exclusively making the Model Y, and some of these cars are being built with Tesla's own 4680 cells. Those cells have caused some issues for Tesla as they are a new technology, so that could be a big contributor to Texas being behind Berlin here. That said, this factory will soon be adding the Cybertruck, so it's great to see them ramping up well with the Model Y. Hopefully, they'll soon be producing 5,000 Model Ys a week. All of these incremental improvements at each factory are what could lead to Tesla making 2 million vehicles a year very soon. While they're working on those overarching production and delivery goals, Tesla continues dominating certain markets, mainly with the Model Y. Over in Denmark, Tesla was the top selling brand for all of Q1, largely thanks to the Model Y being the best selling car there in February and March. In January, it was the second most popular. It took first place in February and maintained that in March. Within March, they sold 3,203 Model Ys, and that also happens to be a new record for the number of registered cars within Denmark in a single month. As Tesla continues ramping production and hitting new delivery records, we'll likely keep seeing these records in more and more countries where it's possible. Next up today, we have some updates about Tesla's affordable $25,000 EV. For the longest time, Tesla has talked about this car, first truly introducing the idea of it being $25,000 at Battery Day in 2020. They spoke about it then, since 4680 cells and various innovations would drive down cost and make a car like this possible. Since then, at Tesla's Investor Day earlier this year, we heard a lot more about how Tesla plans to bring down the cost of that car on the manufacturing side. They are approaching cost cutting from every possible angle, but still they haven't fully unveiled what this car will actually look like. They just have told us that they plan to first make it at their new factory in Mexico, and that this platform will eventually include multiple vehicles built on it. Other than that, and Tesla planning to scale this up massively in the future, there haven't been many details until now. Supply chain sources from China are now reporting that Tesla is preparing the supply chain to make 4 million units of their next vehicle. Quote, sources revealed to 36 Krypton that Tesla's upcoming low-priced model is the small Model Y, and Tesla is building an annual production capacity plant of up to 4 million vehicles for it. Regarding the news, Lay Technology consulted Tesla insiders, but the insiders did not answer directly. Under our repeated questioning, they just gave a no comment. According to this report as well, Tesla plans for those 4 million vehicles to be spread around their factories across the world, with 1 million of them coming out of Giga Mexico. Seemingly, Tesla will first introduce this car at that factory and then copy and paste that production line to other factories. Localization helps a lot with cost, so it will help them keep this car affordable in many different markets. That's a huge goal, especially considering that 
that Tesla is attempting to ship 2 million vehicles total in 2023. With this new model alone, they are reportedly aiming to make 4 million each year, and considering the price, the demand would likely be there for it. What's especially interesting to hear from this report is that they call it a small Model Y. The Model Y is incredibly popular, so this would make sense. Of course, Tesla is planning to change a lot of the core pieces of the vehicle's engineering and manufacturing, but basing it on that car will make a lot of sense. Copy and paste or adapt what they can while making everything else new from the ground up. Additionally, there are certain aspects of the Model Y, like its aerodynamic shape, that lend itself to Tesla keeping on future vehicles. Even if and when they go for a smaller vehicle overall, the aerodynamics will remain very important. So I imagine we'll see a car that looks a lot like this confusing potential Tesla prototype out of China, rather than a flattened out hatchback like the Ionic 5. Even for the Cybertruck, we can attribute a lot of its weird looks to Tesla maintaining that bubble-like aerodynamic shape. In the case of the Cybertruck, it's just squared off, but still is utilizing the general shape Tesla has gone for with all of their vehicles. This is especially interesting to hear after we've had multiple sightings of what could be a smaller Model Y, but appears to really just be an oddly modified Mazda CX-30. Either way, these images give us some insight into what a smaller Tesla could potentially look like. As always, this rumor, along with those sightings I just mentioned, should be taken with a grain of salt, but Tesla's ultimate goal is to be building 20 million cars per year. Adding 4 million of their more affordable EVs, which will be more popular than the cars they currently are on track to make 2 million of each year, will definitely make sense. I'm curious to see if we hear more about this soon, especially since it's coming out of China, and Tesla will ultimately be making this first in Mexico. The first step here is of course breaking ground on the factory to build that car, so we're still a ways away with Tesla's current production focus being Cybertruck. Next up today, we have some new updates about the Cybertruck and one directly from Elon Musk. As we have seen for every new model that Tesla has released, as the vehicle gets closer to production, we'll start seeing leaks and sightings more and more. Here are the latest ones. Last we heard, it seemed Tesla was planning to produce multiple Cybertruck colors, despite saying in the past that the truck wouldn't have any paint at all. They started hiring for specific Cybertruck paint shop jobs, leading us to wonder what those could be for if it's not for paint. Then we spotted another Cybertruck driving on city streets. It's its turning radius was tested on a public road, assisted by the four-wheel steering that we've seen tested at that factory before. Then there were two additional sightings near their Fremont factory. Since then, several new prototypes have been spotted. First, a prototype with smooth all-weather tires was seen driving around. We've pretty much only seen bulky all-terrain tires on this truck, so compared to those, these new tires do look noticeably tame overall. It's possible they're testing different options to make the ride a little smoother, increase range, or decrease the price for consumers, but those tires are something we haven't seen on the this truck before, so as always, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually never see them again. That said, it would make sense for them to offer multiple wheel options like they do on all of their other models. Either way, they still included the same aero wheel covers as previous prototypes, so if it does end up being an option in the configurator, you might still get the same wheel covers and overall the same look. At the same time, we also have an update from the factory. Elon Musk has reported on the assembly line's progress, saying, walked whole Cybertruck production line at Giga Texas for several hours earlier today, gonna be awesome. A little later, he added, feels like the future. Initial production is scheduled for this summer, and it's looking like Tesla might actually meet that deadline, since the production line is already in place. In the meantime, we have even more prototype sightings. A Tesla enthusiast got drone footage of the Cybertruck testing on the Fremont test track next to several other Tesla vehicles. Among them was a first-generation Roadster. You can see the Cybertruck taking the track first, and then the Roadster joining in a little later. Side by side, the truck looks absolutely massive. It's unclear what's going on here, but there were at least eight people gathered here seemingly comparing the two vehicles. It might be for some sort of promotional video Tesla is doing. This is odd though, since Tesla doesn't make that original Roadster anymore and definitely doesn't plan to, so I think it might just relate to some promo. Then on April Fool's Day, Tesla posted a crash test video of the Cybertruck, sort of. In the video, you can see the Cybertruck almost crash a bunch of times from a bunch of different angles, and you can see the audience's reaction to the Cybertruck crashing, but they don't actually show us the crash. It's a funny video overall, but it also shows that Tesla is actively crash testing the Cybertruck and just not showing us yet. This is another sign that true production and customer deliveries are definitely approaching. Both of these videos tell us some things about what we can expect when the Cybertruck finally comes to production. In both, we can clearly see the original giant wiper, so it looks like Tesla might not be changing that design after all if they're crash testing with it. The front trunk redesign might actually be happening as well. Last month, it was rumored that the Cybertruck's front trunk might open more like the Ford F-150 Lightning, and several people pointed out that seams could 
could point to that new design. We have yet to see it in practice, but now you can potentially see those seams in this crash test video more clearly. From this angle, it does look like there might be a seam running past the headlight and down the front corner of the truck, rather than across the top like we saw at the unveil. That would be a very useful feature for the Cybertruck to have, and I'm excited to see it in use. Hopefully we'll catch a leak of that front trunk in action and fully open soon so we can see how large it will really be. Next up today, we regularly talk about Tesla's big advantage when it comes to supercharging, and this has been illustrated again this week. According to new data from alternative fuels data centers and charted out by EV adoption, quote, Tesla has installed 59% of all new DC fast charging ports in the US, January 1st to March 31st, 2023. As we can see, they have installed 1,292 chargers, which is more than all of the rest combined. One of the most well-known networks, Electrify America, installed 60 chargers in comparison, about 20 times less than Tesla. On top of this lead, Tesla also installs more chargers per site, averaging 13.2 ports per station. The overall average for providers is 4.6, with Rivian installing 6 ports per station and Electrify America installing 5.5 ports per station on average. Rivian's adventure network is just getting started, but they still have installed more chargers than Electrify America so far this year. And I wonder if this has to do with Electrify America hopefully slowing temporarily as they figure out rampant issues with their chargers. Tesla has the lead there, but when it comes to charging speeds, they technically don't right now. Other cars and other charging networks offer speeds up to 350 kilowatts, whereas Tesla's top out at 250 kilowatts. I'd argue that as of right now, this doesn't really matter since anyone would rather have 250 kilowatts of reliable charging than the possibility of 350 kilowatt charging speeds, but this is going to change. Tesla has been introducing V4 superchargers in Europe for the first time. Overall, they are a different design, and the main advantage they bring right now is a longer cable to reach other charge port locations. As far as specs, though, they are rated for up to 1,000 volts and a current of 615 amps. At absolute peak, that would mean that these chargers would be capable of charging speeds up to 600 kilowatts. Rarely do we truly see peak output, but this is theoretically possible with these new stalls. In any case, some new rumors about Tesla's V4 superchargers are out, saying that Tesla, as expected, plans to build a CCS adapter into the charger frame. This will be much like their Magic Dock, but a little more integrated. As for speeds, quote, V4 will be capable of a 350 kilowatt output per stall in around one year. One funny thing is that these are speeds Elon was calling, quote, a child's toy all the way back in 2016. In any case, this is big news for future superchargers. Not only will V4 stalls be compatible with more cars, including the Cybertruck, but they will also bring 350 kilowatt speeds. Seemingly, these speeds will be something the Cybertruck will be able to receive, and we'll have to see if Tesla upgrades their current cars to receive these speeds in the near future. If they are moving forward with many V4 chargers, including these speeds in around a year, I'd imagine that change is in order across their lineup. Then soon enough, current V3 250 kilowatt chargers could be Tesla's slower option on a road trip when you're buying a new Tesla. This is definitely exciting to see as faster charging and more availability is what we want to see as EVs get more popular, but it is interesting to see Tesla kind of getting a monopoly when it comes to EV charging. Overall, that's not what we want, but they are so optimized that no other network can really compete, and it seems like they have a huge lead. The first step for V4 chargers, though, is for Tesla building many more of those, and we've yet to see any of those in the US. Next up today, Tesla is hiring and introducing new products within the energy space. First, Tesla has released a new product called the Cyber Vault. Essentially, this is a Cybertruck-inspired box that integrates EV home charging. Overall, it's a fairly simple product, but Tesla says, quote, the Tesla Cyber Vault charging pile is tailor-made for the Chinese market. It weighs 13 kilograms and adopts the Cybertruck design language. The product is integrated with a protective outer box and charging equipment to meet customers' needs for safety, economy, beauty, and durability. Inside the box, itself is Tesla's mobile connector, but the big thing here is that the product appears to include installation. Tesla Asia posted the official video for the product saying, quote, charge your Tesla, energize your life, CyberVault is available now. In this video, we can clearly see that the charger is simple inside this box, but the box itself protects against all kinds of weather and even protects against the things Tesla broke the Cybertruck window with, sledgehammers and a steel ball. Towards the beginning of the video, Tesla shows that the CyberVault has a padlock, so this appears to be a solution for those needing to store their charger somewhere that it could be taken. For now, this product is exclusively available in China, and it converts to cost about $800. To a certain degree, this is an $800 box with a Cybertruck-like design, but considering that it should include installation, that could actually be a very good deal. Regarding home energy for Tesla, they are in the process of expanding their solar business rapidly. In the US, the federal tax credit for solar and batteries was increased by 30% last year and will last for nearly a decade. This is part of what is encouraging more and more people to get solar. Many don't know 
know about Tesla Solar, but Tesla's main product is panels that go on top of an existing roof, paired with power walls to store excess energy and provide home backup. California is a huge market for Tesla Solar, so now they are hiring. They're looking for electricians, site surveyors, technicians, and advisors in Livermore, Irvine, Vista, San Diego, Los Angeles, and Hawthorne. Tesla appears to be most focused on Tesla Solar as opposed to the Tesla Solar roof. They're hiring for installations of Tesla Solar, which they do themselves, but in certain areas like mine, if you want the Tesla Solar roof, they only farm that out to a third party installer and will not actually install it themselves. I see their normal solar product at this point like a Model Y or 3, while the solar roof is like a Model S or X. They can provide largely the same function, but one costs a lot more for some extras. Last up today, one quick note about the rear-wheel drive Model 3. It seems that the tax credit that should have disappeared on April 1st is still around as Tesla waits for official guidance from the IRS. Their Model 3 website now says, update, $7,500 tax credit is anticipated to be reduced for Model 3 on April 18th. Take delivery now. When you click learn more, they add, quote, based on new IRS guidance, the $7,500 credit is now anticipated to be reduced for Model 3 rear-wheel drive on April 18th. This is very interesting to see since that deadline was already pushed back from January to March, then we thought it was April 1st, and now it's April 18th. Either way, it appears to be around the corner as we wait to hear from the IRS. This car, along with many others, will soon be ineligible because of its battery, which is sourced from China. Long term, Tesla could be adjusting battery manufacturing to address this, though. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see my full updated review of the Model 3, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.